Yo, what's up guys? Uh, welcome back to the channel. So we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go back to some more civilian flying and today we are flying the X-Cub. So the X-Cub is essentially the quintessential modern day Piper Cub. The Piper Cub is loved by all pilots all over the world and this takes modern technology, modern materials and brings the Piper Cub back to life with a much better performance. We're in a remote part of South America. Here is our navlock, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take off. Um, we can circle the airfield and then as soon as we're overhead set a heading of 151 and select the time or we could literally just take off select a heading of 151 but generally from being overhead the airfield in the middle and then setting the time is much better. It also gives you a bit more time um, when you're doing sort of very specific navigation. So so we're going to first take off, get overhead the airfield, and then from there we'll start the stopwatch and um, we will start navigating. So take off with this pretty easy, full back pressure, go through to full power, and then slowly release the back pressure and let the tail come off the ground. And at that point, you should basically be able to just lift her off the ground. Nice. Just like that. Now let's just have a look. RPM is right at the max, so uh, we'll bring that down. About 2500 is good for the climb. We'll retract our flaps. There we go. Beautiful weather out here today. Okay, so completing this without getting, without using the get me back on track feature will award an achievement for that particular activity. Sweet. So guys, if you didn't know, this is one of the missions that uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator has for you. Back overhead the airfield. And from there, we're going to set 151 degrees. Okay, sweet as. Now we'll come back around again. And as we pass over it, on track, we will set heading 151 and see if we can actually navigate properly using Microsoft Lutzen. I mean, to be honest, I mean, we have a glass cockpit. We should really be able to use GPS, but I don't want to use GPS for this, otherwise it spoils a lot of the fun, you know, of getting, getting lost and trying to find your way to different places. And overhead the airfield, there we are, start. Put that away. Right, so we want to make sure that we fly our heading of 151 and we're going to be flying that for 4 minutes and 45 seconds. And it's always good to have a look around, keep your situational awareness up. So here's that lake that they were talking about, and it's said to follow the right hand side. Okay, let's have a look at our navlog. Oh, okay, it stopped timing us when I closed it. Well, that's slightly annoying. Like, I mean, I don't want the navlog on the screen. Oh, we'll just have to throw it out there. We're still tracking 151. I guess we've been flying for about two minutes. Remember, if this was real life, I mean, you know, you have to deal with the stuff that uh, stuff that you that you have available to you. So, you can't just go and say, "Oh, well, you know, I want to restart the mission." So, uh, we'll do our best. Follow the heading southeast over the hills, passing the lake to the east. Yes, to north to the north shore of the fast lake in the distance. There it is. There. Turn and fly to the east over and along the shoreline. Okay, so basically once we get to the shoreline, we're going to fly to the east, which is basically off to the left of us about 70 degrees following the shoreline. Surrounded by a dense canopy of trees. Continue past and keep heading east. Eventually you'll find a lagoon. Okay, we'll leave the nav log up there. It would be really cool if you could have it on your screen, like on your on your little ethos or whatever. 
I mean, a bit pretty impossible to get lost on this thing, eh? So we've got 2 minutes 46, so I said we're about 2 minutes, so what we'll do is we'll reset this and we'll turn onto a heading of east 103 degrees if wanted. So we will, we're close enough to 103 that we can start that and we'll change our heading. So we want to get that, we're on currently on 112, 103. And we're doing this for 2 minutes and 10 seconds. Okay, then once we get to the next one, then she'll find a lagoon on the shoreline, ahead of it a lake again, and then right on the shoreline. How long do we have to fly this for? 2 minutes and 10 seconds, so we're almost there actually. Guys, let me know in the comments if you enjoy these types of flights where we're doing more sort of navigation um, without any GPS or anything like that. Um, or any other flights that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. Okay. Now we're going to turn on to 078. I wonder if that is the lagoon down there. We'll just reset this and we'll just... We might be flying slightly slower, we might have gone off track slightly. Just want to see if we if we get a, a you know a bit of a difference. So that must be the lagoon down there. Yes. Past a small lake and surrounded by dense canopy trees. That's the one. Continue past and keep heading east. Guys, if you um, are wondering what head tracking I'm using, I'm actually just using a program called AI Track, and it uses my webcam, and it makes flying so so much better. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit iffy to try and set up, um, and it's a little bit difficult, but it's well worth spending the time and effort getting it set up because now if I set up, go down move right, move left inside the canopy, you know, um, look up, down, and this is just with my head, I've got nothing on my head, no, it's not track aisle or anything like that, um, it's, it's actually amazing for something that is completely free. So yeah, we're just flying down the, the shoreline now, and uh, we're going to be doing this for 5 minutes and 40 seconds, and then hopefully we should end up, um, where did it say we should end up? Uh, eventually you'll find a lagoon on the right, a lagoon right on the shore, oh, a lagoon right on the shoreline, and ahead of it, another lake. Okay, and then past the lake and the lagoon, and you'll be entering to the town on the eastern outskirts of the town. Okay, so we're on the western side if we're flying to the town from this side, so we'll have to go over the town. You should see a runway, this is your first stop. So 5 minutes 42. So we've still got another 3 minutes and 42 seconds to go. It, do, it does say to you that you should try and keep your altitude below 1000 feet AGL and I think we're accomplishing that. So cool seeing some of the snow and stuff around here. I do hope we get to fly inside the mountains at some point. I'd imagine in an area like this we would definitely want the cabin heat on. And uh, let's have a look at our temperatures and pressures. They're all in the green. Everything looks pretty good. Cylinder heat temperatures and exhaust gas temperatures look fine. I almost had a heart attack looking at the exhaust gas temperature because it's in Fahrenheit. And um, everything is good.
guys, I, off I offset my track a little bit doing a few cinematic shots. So we'll head back to the shoreline. And we're about 1 minute and 20 seconds away from our next point. It should be a lagoon or something. So hopefully we find it. And then from there, I think we carried on. Straight ahead and over a town. Oh my word, this thing actually has an autopilot. <laughs> That's crazy. Let's see if it works. Let's let's see if it works. So let's put the uh, flight director on. And it does. It holds level. So the, I, I think that is the lagoon over there on the shoreline. And there's another lake there. And that's the one that we're going to be flying over. Past the lagoon and the lake, and then you'll be entering to the town. On the eastern outskirts of the town, you will see a runway. And this is your first stop. 500. Oh my word, it even has altitude callouts. <laughs> so this must be the lagoon down here. You can see it's cut off from the lake. Got a little opening over there. Right. Past the lake in the lagoon and you'll be entering into the town. So we'll reset this and we'll start that. I do see a few houses. So that's um promising. I might climb up a little bit, see if we can get a bit of a better view of the area. That looks like the town over there. Pretty sure that's it. Basically straight over from the lagoon down there. Right, so let's just have one more look at this and we get rid of the nav log. Um, so the runway is next to sort of uh, a little racetrack and another a little, a few little lagoons or lakes or something like that. Let's see if we can we can find this. Eh? So there's little lakes and lagoons and stuff. So I'm assuming it's going to be over there. But it did say it was on the eastern side of the town. That looks like the runway down there, straight ahead of us, actually. Oh, it's actually on the GPS as well. I didn't realize that. <laughs> this is definitely easy mode, that's for sure. But you see, guys, if you just follow the nav log and, and follow it fairly accurately, you can find the places that you're looking for. So there, there's the racetrack down there. And we have the runway down below us. So what we'll do is we'll fly over, we'll check the, the wind at the airfield. So it's definitely, we could have landed straight in, but you never know unless you actually look at the, at the windsock. As you can see down there. Okay. Because this aircraft's really slow and easy to fly, we'll do a nice short landing. Okay, fully fine. We want to slow her down into the white arc before we put the flaps down. There we go, into the white arc. Flaps down. Do full flaps. Check that the flaps are down. Yes, they are. We want to keep it within the white arc as we go around the circle here. 500. <laughs> These altitude cool notes. Right, we'd be doing a down uh, base call now. Uh, we would have done a downwind call on a base call, but you know, 
no one else in the area, no one flying. Right. T's and P's are good. We'll put that uh, cabin heat off. Uh, we've got enough RPM, but I'll just put, I'll just pull the carb heat out just for a moment. cars and stuff on the motorway. Alright, short finals, car beat away. Flaps are down. Doesn't have cow flaps. Gear is down. Obviously it's a fixed undercarriage and we've got full flaps. And our speed is a little bit on the fast side for a cub. A little bit of crosswind, so we'll do some crosswind technique, a little bit of right pedal there. He does like to float. There's our stall warning, even though we're on the ground. Pretty good system. And we'll put our flaps up immediately to kill the lift. And we have arrived. Right, so we wanna get off over here, I think. Can't really see anything with the zebra, so definitely have to do a bit of taxiing to the side. Pretty typical tail dragger stuff this. Oh, look at that and we did it well there you go guys i um i hope you guys enjoyed this uh this is one of the bush trips that you can do in microsoft lots and i thought i would make a video about it and i hope you guys enjoyed it um if you if you did let me know down in the comments uh leave a like if you enjoyed the video subscribe if you're new and you'd like to see more of this content and i will make some more so anyways guys you have a nice rest of your day onwards and upwards.